Hello and welcome to an episode of Historically Marked. I am Jason and I am standing in Capitol Square and right behind me is the most important building in the great state of Ohio. Yes, the Buckeye State. This is the Ohio State House. I'll be taking you inside. I'll be showing you where all the government officials go to work at. I'll be taking you to some statues. I'm, there's some historical markers outside the building and yes, they're all related to the Capitol, but I'm going to um, respectfully skip them. But I'll tell you some history about this place. Now, this was built between 1838 to 1861. This took a lot of time to build because, yes, the project was stalled for many years. It was also stalled by fire. But the, the State House did open in 1857, even though it wasn't really completed yet. And I'll tell you more about that inside. But I'll go ahead and tell you some history about the state of Ohio. And of course, I'll show you around. Here we go. Now this is the south side of the uh, state house. According to people that work inside and locals, there really is no front part of it. So, and the entrances change, I guess so. But it is said that half a million people visit here each year from all over the country. And today I'm one of those people. It is, it is put, put on the National Register of Historic Places. It is a National Historic Monument. And it's noted for its Greek Revival architecture. And the first um, capital was originally in Chili Coffee. And then it was also in Zanesville. But it, it was decided by state officials to move it literally to the central part of the state. And indeed they did. Yes, yeah, so pretty much this is the heart of Ohio as well as the heart of Columbus, Ohio. And Abraham Lincoln visited this place, well, twice when he was alive, once and the other in death, but there's a marker that talks about that. I'll get into that later on. As far as the state of Ohio, now whenever I do visit a state house, I'd like to go over a little bit of information about the state, fittingly. So Ohio got its name from the Ohio River, which forms the state border on the south as well as the southeast. It is a Seneca word for good river. So the nickname is the Buckeye State among many others. It is the seventh most populated state in the United States. It ranks number 10 as the most densely populated state. Number one being New Jersey. As far as the size of the state it is ranked number 34. I know it's, it's, it kind of surprised me too, even though it is small perspective wise compared to most states. So, some fun facts about the state of Ohio it is considered the mother of all presidents because many uh, U.S. presidents have uh, been born here. And the most recent one was Warren G. Harding. The state beverage is tomato juice. The state bird is the cardinal. I'll put some more facts on the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you inside and I'll then afterwards I'll show you the monuments that are outside of this place. It's really beautiful. I mean, it's well kept. I mean, it should be, I hope, because yeah, it's the, again, it's the most important building in the state of Ohio, but it's very cool to uh, check this place out because a lot of, uh, I know a lot of cool Ohioans out there and at least three of my high school classmates slash friends live here in Columbus, which is very fascinating. <laughs> but I tell you, the way to get inside, I, I highly recommend doing the underground parking because, I mean, it's easy. You can also um, get into the state capitol building from there. Yes, they do. I, I believe they do charge a fee. Well, I'll find out eventually. But uh, they do have a museum in here. Lots to see, and they have a restaurant in here as well. So that's pretty much what I can tell you. Ooh, what is this? Oh, okay. By the Grain Army of the Republic, a little sundial. But here we go. And here is the atrium. Looks like they got a, what do you call it, a press release or a press conference about to go on but here's an interesting plaque I see over here 
Here stood Abraham Lincoln at the invitation of the citizens of Columbus, Ohio. Abraham Lincoln delivered a memorable address here on the 16th day of September, 1859, or 1859. <laughs> This commemorative marker was erected on the 75th anniversary of that event by the people of Ohio, and that was on 1934. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make my way this way and go upstairs. Historic renovation of the Ohio State House. This Judiciary Annex was begun in 1990 to commemorate the accomplishments of Ohioans past and to better serve the needs of future generations. All right, let's see what's up this way. Oh man, digging this. And that looks like a portrait of Thomas Edison up there who did live in Ohio. Wow, check out that dome. Let's see if I can stay in the middle of it. <laughs> ah. Ain't that nice. <laughs> And inside the rotunda is a portrait, Perry's Victory, on Lake Erie, September 10th, 1813. And I have been to Putin Bay, but that was like almost 30 years ago. I definitely want to do a few episodes on that island, especially at that memorial where you get to go to the top of the tower. And also is the Lincoln and Soldiers Monument. The Ohio Monumental Association was organized April 25th, 1865 at Columbus to devise ways and means for the erection of suitable memorials to the memory of Lincoln and the Civil War soldiers of Ohio. And the result was this memorial in the Capitol Rotunda, representing the surrender of Vicksburg, surmounted by a bust of President Lincoln. This monument is often mistakenly referred to as the Vicksburg Monument. And that up there is Lincoln's bust. But if you want to look. And it was done by T.D. Jones, the sculptor. All right, so from the rotunda, we're going to go down a little bit near the governor's office. And it looks like I think I've reached the House of Governors, meaning portraits of every governor that has served the state of Ohio. And unfortunately, there are no names to go with these gentlemen, but <laughs> that looks like Rutherford B. Hayes. I think he was the governor before he became president of the United States. And that right there is the entrance. I don't think the public is allowed behind those doors. I'm not going to try. <laughs> But the current sitting governor as of April 2024 is Mike DeWine. He served in a lot of statewide offices before he became governor in 2019. But here's a picture of him inside his office, as well as all of his cabinet members. This here is the state room. I'm not gonna try and go in there either. Oh, here's some more governors. I don't know how many Governors have served the state of Ohio, but. And I'm gonna see what this bust. Oh, it's Sam, it's Salmon Pete Chase, okay. He was the first governor to occupy the newly constructed Ohio State House in 1857, okay. And on January 6th of that same year, a Capitol Festival was held for the citizens of Ohio to celebrate the opening of their new Capitol building. An estimated 8,000 visitors turned out for the event. They had food, they were treated to food, speeches, and dancing in the Senate chamber, which lasted until 6 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> and then it says here, his remarks, Governor Chase stated, I only wish that all the people of the state could be here to, to, to participate in the festival. Hmm. The Ulysses S. Grant hearing room. All right, where should I go next? Okay, now I'm in the, I'm in right in front of the entrance to the house chamber. And of course it says house members only, nobody, nobody but elected officials can go past those doors. Here's a bust of William M. McCulloch. 
He held a lot of offices here in Ohio. Speaker of the Ohio House of Representatives from 1939 to 1943. He also served um, six years before that, elected in 1932. And then he was a U.S. House, he served in the U.S. Congress from 1947 to 1972. I don't know, you think they'd care if I took a peek? <laughs> And here are some galleries, like here are some portraits of past Ohio Speaker of the Houses down here. And this is a little outdated because this was 2020, or the 2019 to 2020 term, 133rd General Assembly. But these are all the statewide officials. Are you one of them? Or do you know somebody who was one of them? <laughs> And here's some more from other years as well. And upstairs, just right above governor's office, is the Senate chamber. No, this is not it, but it's actually just right over here. And I didn't say a sign, I didn't see a sign that says do not enter, but this is as far as I'll go. Yep, these are all where the Ohio State Senators meet. And just outside the entrance to those doors is uh, all the state senators of Ohio, currently the 135th General Assembly. He's the president. And I don't know if this applies to every state house or every state capitol building, but I noticed this one also has a glass elevator. I think the one in Utah did too, if I'm not mistaken. Perhaps it's for safety purposes, I don't know, but either way it's interesting. Hmm. And now we are entering what is called the Ladies' Gallery. And not just celebrates the women's rights movement, but it also celebrates the women who have served in the Ohio State Senate and the Ohio General Assembly. And here is a big portrait of Joanne Davidson, who was the first woman speaker of the Ohio House of Representatives. And then she served from 1995 to 2000. And interestingly, it says here, women were able to work in state government in Ohio decades before they had the right to vote or hold elected positions. Sarah Reed served as a recording clerk for the 66th Ohio General Assembly from 1884 to 1885. That's her right there. And then the, here's a book called Eve's Tower. It's a fictional novel about Francis Elrod, a lawyer who was elected to the state legislature of a Midwestern state. And the author, Mae Martin Van Wy, was one of the first women elected to the Ohio General Assembly. She served three terms in the House of Representatives and one in the Senate between 1922 to 1930. You can also watch a film if you want to. But I'm going to skip on that, but I'm just going to kind of check out some of the memorabilia here. And this is the visitor center, or what is considered the visitor center. And that is the gift shop there, restrooms. Now here's something I find really cool. Now you can learn about all of um, Ohio's 88 counties. So you can, the way how you do that is you spin this wheel, like Wheel of Fortune. And I don't really have one in mind, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a random one. I think I'll go with Knox County. Okay, so this is some historical information about Knox County. It doesn't look like it's very far from here. <laughs> And it talks about the county seat, fast facts. Huh. Very nice. I wonder if other state capitals have this too. And here <laughs> is all counties of Ohio. And let's see. This is where I'm at right now in Franklin County in Columbus. And here is an exhibit on Ohioans in space. And then is John Glenn Jr. 
Neil Armstrong and Jim Lavelle. First man on the moon. Here's some more on that exhibit. Including some stuff that they put in space. And every state capitol building has at least one Liberty Bell replica. And some are outside of state capitals, some aren't, but this one is inside and it's on the very bottom. But yeah, that's pretty much the fake crack. It is not a real crack, but it's supposed to look like one. <laughs> and this was given here in 1950. And there's also a museum, but it's actually known as the Salomon P. Chase Education Center. Now here's a marker here at the north side of the state house and it talks about Abraham Lincoln's visit. But here's pretty much what he said. This slavery element is a durable element of discord among us. We shall probably not have perfect peace in this country with it until either masters of the free principle in our government or is mastered by the free principle. So on September 16th, 1859, Lincoln addressed a small crowd from the East Terrace of the State House. In his first Ohio speech, Lincoln repeated his conviction that a house divided against itself cannot stand and took issue with Democrat Stephen Douglas' concept of popular sovereignty. Published and widely circulated as an addendum to the Lincoln-Douglas debates, Lincoln's Columbus speech helped stake a firm position for the Republican Party in the 1860 presidential campaign that followed. Lincoln twice returned to Columbus, once on February 13, 1861, to address a joint session of the legislature prior to his inauguration, and one last time on April 29, 1865. From 9.30 a.m. until 4 p.m., Lincoln's body lay in state in the rotunda as 50,000 mourners filed through the state house to pay their respects. And this was put up by the Ohio Historical Society and the Bicentennial Commission in 2003. This here is the Peace Monument, which is also in the northern part of the state house. This is commemorating the heroic sacrifices of Ohio soldiers of the Civil War and the loyal women of that period. This was put up in 1923 by the Women's Relief Corps, Department of Ohio. Here at the northwest part of the state house is the These Are My Jewels Monument. And then this is Ulysses S. Grant. And I'm gonna keep going around. General Philip Sheridan, Edwin M. Stanton, James A. Garfield, Rutherford B. Hayes, Salmon P. Chase, and General William Tecumseh Sherman. This is the Ohio World War I monument. Here is the William McKinley Monument. He was the 25th President of the United States. He is one of eight presidents of the United States to die in office, and he was one of four who was assassinated. He was born in Niles, Ohio, and he died 1901 in Buffalo, New York. Let's see what it says, his quotes. Let us ever remember that our interest is in concord, not conflict, and that over real eminence rests in the victories of peace, not those of war. Our earnest prayer is that God will graciously uh, prosperity, happiness, and peace to all, our neighbors, and like blessings to all the peoples and the powers of the earth. And right in front of it is the great seal of the state of Ohio. Near the southwest part of the state house is this memorial. The spirit of 98, as in 1898, to honor the soldiers from Ohio that served in the Spanish-American War. And of course, the city is named after explorer Christopher Columbus, born in Italy and was originally from Spain. And I know there are a lot of different uh, controversies and theories about whether or not, I know we were all taught in grade school that he discovered America, but as for now, let's pay close attention to this tribute that is on the southwest part of this state house.
And here is the Holocaust and Liberators Memorial. Inspired by the Ohio soldiers who were part of the American liberation and survivors who made Ohio their home. If you save one life, it is as if you save the world. I'm gonna get up close to it. And the writing is from Yaffa Elyich. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing it, but it's from his book, Tales of the Holocaust. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Historically Marked State Capitals, or in this case, State Houses Edition. I am just outside the Ohio State House in downtown Columbus, Ohio. All right, stay tuned for some more episodes. I'm Jason signing off.